The fact that we have so many competing religious beliefs and ideas, it's hard to decide which one's correct in this crazy, crazy world. Well, one church thinks they have the answer. Mixing the scientific world with that of the supernatural. Mix it all together and you've got yourself a tasty bowl of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and it's been a while since I've recorded one of these. I've just come back from holiday. Plug my Instagram if you want to see some pictures. But anyway, um, I might be a little bit rusty, so uh, bear with me here. So, I want to start today's video by directing your attention to this image. This is Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam. However, there's a slight difference in this, in that um, there is a more noodly appendage that we have to look at coming from a giant spaghetti monster. So, before you click off on one of these not-so-good videos on the recommended feed, I'm going to go into a bit more detail and explain why on earth we're talking about this thing today. Pastafarianism is a social movement or a light-hearted view on the idea of religion, a parody of religion itself. The followers of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster believe in a flying spaghetti monster. Obviously. Followers of the church attest the legitimacy of the religion, and while it does not have as much recognition compared to other established religious groups, this idea of thinking is growing. Look, I'm not advocating for religion in any way, but all I'm saying is if you're going to pick one, you may as well pick one of the ones that has that live, laugh, love mentality that everybody likes to harp on about. Yes, it's pretty much one of those annoying middle-aged housewife slogans that are banded around, except this time it's got something to do with spaghetti. Despite the official website of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster saying that it existed in secrecy for hundreds of years, it does say that it only came to the mainstream just a few years ago. How far back do we mean? Well, in 2005, Bobby Henderson, an American physics graduate, wrote an open letter in protest to the Kansas State Board of Education on their decision to permit teaching intelligent design as an alternative to evolution in public school science classes. He demanded that equal time be given in the classroom for alternate scientific beliefs, such as that of the flying spaghetti monsterism, alongside intelligent design and evolution. Of course, being the late 2000s, he published his letter online, gaining the appreciation of the internet who made this a viral sensation. So, to put it simply, this giant flying spaghetti monster is a symbol of the opposition of intelligent design teaching in schools. Reporter of the Associated Press commented on this open letter at the time and made the following observation. Between the lines, the point of the letter was this. There's no more scientific basis for intelligent design than there is for the idea of an omniscient creature made of pasta created the universe. If intelligent design supporters could demand equal time in a science class, why not everyone else? The only reasonable solution is to put nothing into science classes but the best available science. So, Henderson decided to use his newfound popularity and decided to write a book, or a gospel. A gospel of the flying spaghetti monster. And in 2006, even claimed to be a prophet. You know, as you do. I mean, if I was a guy that created an entire religion on a flying spaghetti monster, I too would pronounce myself a prophet. The central creation myth is that an invisible and undetectable flying spaghetti monster created the universe after drinking heavily. Pirates were the original incarnation of pastafinarists, with many today associating themselves with the group and praising their carb god with huge balls. Meatballs, I may add. So, effectively, the church says that it is due to this drunken rampage that resulted in a flawed planet, which actually goes, in my opinion, a lot further to explain a lot of the messed up stuff that we have in our world compared to many other religions because I think that is a very, very valid criticism and if someone did it when they were pissed up then, well, who knows how it happened aside from maybe one too many tequila shots The other beliefs around the religion came in the form of what happens during the afterlife where heaven includes a beer volcano and a stripper with their version of hell being the exact same but the beer is stale and the strippers all have STIs. Remind me to seek forgiveness for all the wrongs I've undertaken in my life. Followers even go as far as having a headdress to show their support for the religion. And, you may have guessed it already, but the ideal headwear for this 
is to stick a colander or a pasta strainer on your head. Because why the hell not? Satire at its finest. As you might imagine, the church has garnered some rather mixed reviews in recent years, many of which come forward and absolutely love the idea of the church and what it stands for, or just the fact that they love a giant flying spaghetti monster. Whilst others, including those that are particularly critical of the idea of opposing intelligent design and and there being room for other sciences out there, might have a few questions. Proponents of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster have used this to dispute religious arguments in that since the existence of the invisible and undetectable Flying Spaghetti Monster is something that they believe in, similar to that of other proposed supernatural beings, this simply cannot be falsified. It demonstrates that the burden of proof rests on those who believe in the existence of such beings. I mean, at the end of the day, the whole thing is pretty arbitrary anyway, because yes, you can claim that you have a profound belief in some being that you don't have the evidence to prove is there. Yes, okay, fair enough. But at the end of the day, ultimately, it is what is in here. What is truly in your heart, and what you want to believe, and what you think you can contribute to the world to make it a better place. Even if that's believing with everything you've got inside of you, that your Lord and Saviour is made of pasta. Yes, that's right, a flying spaghetti monster is, as argued by many people that follow the religion, as philosophically defensible as many other non-physical beings or deities that other religions prescribe to. So yeah, you can believe it if you want to, or you can say that you don't. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Many people follow the church because of the idea that they like a flying spaghetti monster or that they truly believe that their lord and saviour is a flying spaghetti monster but many others use this as a vehicle to basically push an argument and an agenda in a very philosophical topic and I think it's a pretty creative way to go about it. So, how popular is the church? Well, it has to be pretty popular because if it was not very popular we probably wouldn't be talking about it today. There are thousands of confirmed followers online, however, it's not established enough, well, as far as many people see anyway, for it to be an actual recognised religion. A Dutch court ruled that pastafarianism isn't actually a recognised religion. The reason for this? A law student applied for her identity card and driver's licence to be changed so she could wear a colander on her head. She argued that it was the same as wearing a turban or a headscarf. The arguments from the other side was that the religion did not require this as an item of clothing and was only a recommendation, meaning that she couldn't rely on any religious grounds for saying that she had to wear it. So yeah, there's an awful lot to cover here from what the religion is, how silly it is and also perhaps the reason that many other people prescribe to the idea of this religion. However, that was hopefully a quick whistle stop tour on what this giant flying spaghetti monster is and how it came about today. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Ah, the wonderful world of creation, and the fact that this all allegedly happened as a result of a massive bender, which is a, a religion I think I could prescribe to very well. In Christianity, it's often said that Jesus was the bread of life, a symbolic representation of God's sustaining provision. I mean, that's one way of looking at it, and I'm sure you could apply the same principle, except instead of the bread of life, it is the pastor of life. So, next time you're extremely hungover and you need some food in you, I recommend getting some spaghetti and meatballs, because you know for a fact that is what your Lord and Saviour would have wanted you to have done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.